Hello out there to you. In this video, we're going to calculate the producer surplus from this supply function. This supply function is a little different because it is perfectly inelastic. In other words, the sellers will sell 30 units regardless of the price, and so we're going to try to find, find whatever that uh, producer surplus is. Okay, so first we need to figure out what the equilibrium price and quantity is. We actually know the quantity. We know the quantity is 30 because that's how many units the sellers are going to sell. Uh, we just don't know uh, what the equilibrium price is. So that's going to happen where quantity supplied equals quantity demanded. And we know quantity supplied is, is always going to be 30. So they're just going to set that, that. That's that part of the equation. The other equation will be 120 minus 3p. That's the demand function right there. Okay. And so we're going to solve for p. So to do that, we're going to add 3p to this side. That adds 3p to this side. And then I'm going to subtract uh, 30 from this side and subtract 30 from this side. It gives me 90. And I've got p. Then divides both sides by 3. So the price is 30. Okay, now because I've been doing this a while, I know what this looks like um, graphically. Okay, so I'm going to draw a little picture here of what we're looking at to calculate. Okay, so because this one looks a little different. So we have a, a quantity of 30. This is the supply function, and it's not going to change. Okay, the demand function is going to be um, something that looks like this. This is demand. Okay. And we know that the price is 30. It would be nice. The producer surplus, by the way, is just the area of this rectangle. So when it's perfectly inelastic, somebody's going to have a rectangle here. So this is the producer surplus. So really, it's just 30 times 30 uh, is 900. That's your answer. Okay. Now, if I want the consumer surplus and the total surplus, let's go ahead and get that too, uh, even though we've already answered the question. So the, to get the consumer surplus, I need, just need to know uh, what is the area of this. This is a rectangle. Okay, And I just need to know this number right here. Okay, So the way to get that number is to plug in a zero for uh, quantity demanded. So right here, put in zero right there, and I get 120 minus 3p. We'll send 3p over there because we're going to add 3p to this side, then you add 3p to that side. This is 120. Price equals uh, 40. So 40 is the price when the quantity is zero. So this this number right here is 40. So the consumer surplus is the area of this triangle. So if I were to write it all out, it would be uh, 40 minus 30. So it's the difference between what they're willing to pay and what they actually pay. And I'm going to multiply that part by 30, the number of units in the market. Okay. So this is 10 times 30. That's 300. And then 150 is the consumer surplus. So if I wanted the total surplus, total surplus is going to be producer surplus plus consumer surplus. What I'm really looking at is the area of this yellow. Yellow is not a good color for that. Let's do pink. Area of this pink uh, sort of trapezoid looking thing. So that's that part right there is the consumer surplus. That's the producer surplus. Because we already did the math on it, we can just add them together. So we know that um, producer surplus is 900. The consumer surplus is 150. This is 1,050 is the total surplus in this market. 